Hello, I'm Richard Guerin with EE Times. We're here at the Design Automation Conference at a rather unusual booth. This is the Unified Power Format booth, and it's sponsored by several competitors, uh, Magma Design Automation, uh, Synopsis, and Mentor Graphics. We've come together to sponsor this group, and today we have Dennis Brovi from Mentor Graphics, and we have Yatin Trevetti from Magma. Uh, normally, you two guys are, are tooth and nail competitors. Correct. So why are you cooperating to put this booth together? I was just telling uh, Yatin that I really like the ferocious uh, competition that we have in the marketplace, but I also love the passion of working on standards that satisfy the needs of our mutual customers. Design information uh, can't live in a single uh, company flow in, in vacuum, and if we all agree in a format, what we're doing is, is helping and increasing, boosting designer productivity and efficiency, and I think that's what it's all about, and that's why we collaborate as well as compete. And, and why this particular standard, Jan? So, you know, collaborate on standards, compete on implementations or tools. That's, that's right. the way we are all going by. Um, this particular standard is very important because today, low power is the most significant problem uh, in the industry uh, as far as chip design goes. Mm -hmm. And, um, uh, you know, uh, a lot of people now talk about gate is free or gates are free, but power is expensive. Mm -hmm. So that's why we need to address this. Okay, so what are you demonstrating in this booth here? We are demonstrating that the interoperability of all of the vendors who are participating and supporting uh, this effort uh, is beneficial to the end users in terms of design implementation tools, design verification tools, design uh, analysis tools. They all use exactly the same UPF, and as a designer, you own the design data but able to switch between the uh, tool vendors. We're actually taking a, uh, you know, start off with RTL design, we're demonstrating this. Mm -hmm. Uh, and verifying it with UPF and then taking it through implementation phase and when it gets into the gate level with, with also uh, the newer uh, UPF that comes out of that with the uh, traditional gate level that comes out of, of um, synthesis, it works and still has the appropriate power characteristics that the designer designed at the RTL level. And we're showing that with multi-vendor tools operating. Okay, so what exactly does UPF allow the designer to do? Well, one thing I think, like, and I think Gotten can add to this, but the important one to me is it allows them to keep their current process, their current design flow in place, and augment it by bringing in low power uh, information and, uh, and uh, constraints that it, they impose on the design. So it allows them to actually begin to do things that they used to have to do by hand. Now they can actually uh, have the tools automate a lot of that process instead of going through maybe cumbersome, error-prone uh, ways of doing it, or uh, translation from one format to another, they can use a single format. Mm -hmm. uh, also important thing is that uh, the functional description has always been in the HDL. Timing descriptions uh, or constraints have been in the STC format. Uh, you have the library information in the mm -hmm. .lib format. This gives you opportunity to write all your power uh, information, uh, all the requirements and the constraints uh, in a uh, unified format. But what about some of the really difficult multi-voltage designs where people are trying to do power gating, voltage scaling? Does UPF help with those kinds of designs? Absolutely. Yes. So, uh, you know, uh, everything about uh, multiple uh, uh, power domains or voltage domains, uh, everything uh, in terms of, uh, you know, identifying the level shifter requirements, isolation cell requirements, retention cells, uh, you know, all of, and, and their behaviors uh, is something that you can uh, put inside the UPF line. Okay. Are there any tools that support UPF today? Today there are uh, at least eight vendors who are uh, supporting uh, UPF through their tools. There is a UPF solutions guide uh, mm -hmm. that actually gives the uh, information uh, mm -hmm. and the uh, set of uh, uh, UPF uh, supporting vendors are mm -hmm. right in here. Uh, and uh, the solution guide actually gives you uh, information about uh, various vendors and what their flows are, mm -hmm. the, the contact person, um, and the email address, um, uh, and the availability uh, date. Uh, it's all in there. Plus, there's a quick reference guide that actually helps the designer uh, work with that. Okay, but is it being used in production flows today? I, I think that I'll answer that, Richard. Uh, this stuff, uh, the progenitor technology and that has gone into UPF, has had several years of testing in the hands of some of the advanced uh, designs in the world, and it has been proven successful, and they're continuing to use this technology as the UPF versions of these, uh, of these tools roll out. So, yes, it is in production use today. Okay. Now there's another booth down there somewhere where there's another power mm -hmm. format being shown, common mm -hmm. power format. Any, any progress, any hope of uh, 
someday converging those two together so we have one industry standard. There's a platform for convergence to happen. There's been one for the last year for it to happen. And I think all of us remain hopeful that uh, all who want convergence to happen will join in with, uh, with uh, the rest of the industry. So I, I, it's, it's a possibility, but it's not something I control. Okay. We, we think as a broad platform, IEEE is the right place uh, for worldwide standardization. Um, most of the, uh, or the entire design community respects uh, what IEEE standards have done for Ethernet, for wireless, you know, for many, many standards. So I, IEEE is the place where we should be uh, really doing all the convergence effort. And UPF is an IEEE effort now, is that well, right? Well, UPF is uh, being donated into the IEEE mm -hmm. 1801 working group. Yes. Okay. All right. Okay. Last question. Mm -hmm. Dennis, why are you wearing a Star Trek uniform? I just came from lunch and Mentor Graphics was actually highlighting our low power support. Uh, I had Yachten with me, dressed in a nice suit, and we, in fact I also had Synopsis. We were demonstrating that uh, fierce competitors can actually get together and collaborate. And so what we wanted to do is impart a message of, of uh, supportive standards and collaborating with, uh, with uh, our competitors in a way that was, that was fun to be digested by our, uh, by our users and prospects. So we had a Star Trek theme for that. Okay, a very powerful message indeed. Yep. So thank you, Dennis and Yatton, and thank you for watching thank the E-Times e TV. Thank you.